Two days after Walter Cronkite's somber analysis of the war, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, one of the Johnson administration's key architects for the Vietnam War, President, steps down. I cannot <coughs> find words to uh, express what lies in my heart today. Although he had announced his intended resignation three months earlier, McNamara's departure in the wake of Tet is seen by many as confirmation that the administration's Vietnam policy is failing. How would this help end the war? Well, this hopefully is a democracy. What becomes known as the credibility gap is vastly widened, as many American people see a strikingly different view of the war than the optimistic pronouncements of the Johnson administration. All the statesmen are very different, and it's very hard to believe. One says this way, the other one says the other way. And I don't know what to believe. I have a brother that's over in, that just came back from Vietnam, and he talked about it, and it's a lot rougher than what they said. National politicians seize the opportunity and openly speak out against the war. The senator from Minnesota, Eugene McCarthy, challenges President Johnson, his fellow Democrat, for the party's nomination for the coming election, and nearly defeats him in the New Hampshire primary. The entire history of this war in Vietnam, no matter what we call it, has been one of continued error and of misjudgment. And many of us in the Congress followed patiently. With his administration in turmoil and public support for the war at just 41%, Johnson addresses the nation. Good evening, my fellow Americans. Tonight I want to speak to you of peace in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. No other he orders place. a halt to the bombing of North so Vietnam in the area where 90% of the population resides and announces an effort to start peace talks to settle the war. He then drops a political bombshell. With American sons in the field far away, with America's future under challenge right here at home, with our hopes and the world's hopes for peace and the balance every day, I do not believe that I should devote an hour or a day of my time to any personal partisan causes or to any duties other than the awesome duties of this office, the presidency of your country. Accordingly, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Eight days after Johnson's stunning announcement, the siege at Quezon, the final remaining battle of the Tet Offensive, officially ends. The Air Force's relentless bombing succeeded in finally forcing the NVA to pull back and eventually opened the way for soldiers from the 1st Air Cavalry to break through to the base. The 77-day-long battle is the longest ever fought by U.S. troops during the Vietnam War and one of the costliest. Of the 6,000 Americans at Khe Sanh, 274 have been killed and another 2,500 wounded. Of the estimated 20,000 NVA who originally encircled the base, 12,000 are dead. I suppose part of me is still in shock. I thought for sure I was gonna die up on that hill. But somehow, we held off the attack. Medical corpsman Raymond Torres suffers shrapnel wounds to his face, torso, and legs. They always say, no Marine left behind. And they really mean it. Those Marines hauled my ass to safety. They were there for me when I was so hurt, I couldn't do a thing for them. 
I suppose that's the hardest part of it all. The fact that I lived and so many of them died. I was the medic. I was the guy that was supposed to take care of them. They weren't supposed to take care of me. It's just very, very hard, hard emotionally. On you emotionally because you do everything that you can and it's not enough, you know. And that's always weighed on me th throughout my whole life. In their final analysis, the U.S. military reports that 69% of the 84,000 NVA and Viet Cong troops who fought during the Tet Offensive are killed. The VC guerrillas suffer such devastating losses, both in numbers and to their command structure, that they are essentially wiped out as an effective fighting unit. Militarily, Tet is an unquestionable American victory. But for much of the American public, it will be the graphic images of death and destruction that continue to resonate the loudest. Tet has changed the war.